Hello everybody, it's Jordan from The Travel Buffet here with another exciting video for you today. So welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, today I want to talk about Disney World. So I'm getting really pumped up for my trip later this year over Labor Day weekend to go to uh, both food and wine festival at Epcot, but also we are checking out the grand opening of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge down at Hollywood Studios. So we are all getting really excited to go on that trip. It's gonna be me, my husband Craig, and my mom and my dad, and this is kind of our family vacation for the year. So when we initially planned this trip, it was just gonna be a food and wine festival adventure, but then the Disney gods either smiled or frowned upon us, depending on which member of my family you are, uh, and decided to open up Galaxy's Edge while we're going to be there as well. So we decided we had to be the ultimate Star Wars nerds, and by we I mean me and Craig, because my mom and dad are like, eh, crowds, no thank you. Um, so we are going down for the actual grand opening day and experiencing it for the first time uh, with everybody else. So I'm getting really excited about that. Uh, but it's got me in the Disney spirit, and I have been re-watching a lot of Disney movies recently to get myself kind of amped up. Uh, but today I want to talk to you about what the ideal timeline is to plan a vacation to Walt Disney World uh, in Orlando, Florida. So to get started, I recommend kicking off this process about seven months in advance. The, and there are a few reasons for this that will come up down the road, but the very first thing I would recommend doing for yourself is to grab your hotel reservation. So whether you're going to be staying on site at Disney or at an Orlando hotel or even at an Airbnb in the area, you want to lay the groundwork and get a plan in place for what dates you're going to be there. That way you can build the foundation of your actual trip. So when you get that set in place, um, and you can buy your tickets at the same time if you'd like, uh, Disney sometimes does package deals where if you stay on site and buy tickets then you get special perks. Um, and there are a whole set of perks to staying on site at Disney as well, um, which I will talk about in a later video. So then we move to the six month mark. Now this is really why I tell people to start seven months ahead of time. So at the six month mark, your window for dining reservations opens up. So what this means is that you can actually make reservations inside the Disney World restaurants. And this is to ensure that you don't have to wait in line. Uh, there are a lot of really cool themed dining experiences that you can do, character dining, or just really good food in general. Um, and the popular places will book up. It is, you know, just like going to the steakhouse downtown that uh, you anticipate for months and you want to book a reservation so that you don't miss out on a good opportunity. It's the same concept. And now I don't necessarily recommend totally booking yourself up unless you plan to go during a peak time, but it is a great way to ensure that you will get to sit down at an ideal time for your meals. So I say six months ahead of time, but this window actually opens up 180 days ahead of time. So what I like to do is my calculator on my computer uh, has a feature for date calculation. And so what I will do is plug in the date that I plan to arrive at Disney World, whether that be I'm staying on site at a Disney World hotel, which is that would be the day that your reservation opens. But if you're not staying on site, then you would want to pick the first day that you're planning to visit the parks. So I put that date in my calculator and then I say subtract 180 days and then whatever that day is I will set a calendar reminder on my calendar so I don't forget to do it. The dining reservation window opens up at 6 o'clock in the morning uh, so I recommend having a plan in place the night before and knowing which reservations are going to be more hard to get, which ones will be maybe a little bit easier to get, and book them in that order. And something that you'll want to keep in mind when booking your dining reservations is uh, thinking through what days you might be visiting each park. Especially if you're staying on site, you will get some extra magic hours. And what that means is you get to visit the parks an hour early or sometimes two hours after regular park hours if you're staying on site. You will want to know which days you'll get your extra magic hours, so you'll want to take a look and see at the park schedule. And unfortunately, they don't make this available until 180 days ahead of time as well. Uh, so that's kind of inconvenient, but you can look at the previous weeks and kind of guess, assuming that they're not going to change things too much uh, from one week to the next. 
So, but if you've got, you know, your Animal Kingdom extra magic hours on Wednesday from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., you'll probably want to make your uh, Animal Kingdom reservations that day, assuming that you're going to take advantage of your extra magic hours. So once you get your dining reservations in place, there's not really another big milestone um, as far as like an exact date on when you have to do things, but the three to four month uh, time window before your vacation is generally when I would recommend looking at flights for your trip especially if you're going to be flying southwest which I like to take advantage of the more affordable southwest flights especially from Indianapolis I find that there's some really uh, good airfare and also you get um, two free check bags with your ticket and so especially if you're bringing kids with you and you have a lot of extra stuff that you need to bring um, having the extra space in your suitcase can be a lifesaver so I recommend about three to four months ahead of time is an ideal time to book your flight. I always tell people to look on like a Tuesday or Wednesday morning for the best airfare. Uh, definitely don't book on weekends unless it's the only time that you can book your airfare because prices do tend to spike over the weekends. Um, sometimes you can get special deals over holidays like Labor Day, Memorial Day. Sometimes there will be special airfares. Uh, so you just kind of have to watch for those things, uh, but those are just general rules of thumb uh, when booking flights. A great tool I like to use is called Hopper. Uh, it's an app and you can actually plug in your dates and say, hey, this is when I'm going to be going uh, to this place and I need to buy a flight. So let me know when the lowest airfare is available. And so that is a really great tool to use when you're trying to save money because uh, the flight can be expensive. And I will say, once you do get your flight booked, if you are staying on site at a Disney World hotel, you can actually take advantage of Disney's Magical Express, which I did do a tutorial video on how to use. So if you want to check that out, I've got the link in the info section of this video. But basically, the Disney's Magical Express is a free transportation service for on-site guests. Uh, they will grab your bags off of the luggage carousel for you, so you don't even have to pick those up. All you do is you get off your plane and you head straight to the transportation area, get on your bus, and they take you over to your resort. So it's pretty convenient. It works both ways, coming in and going home. Uh, and like I said, you don't even have to deal with your bags, so that's kind of a, a nice little perk. So, but once you do get your flights booked, if you are taking advantage of Disney's Magical Express, then you'll need to submit your flight information so that your transportation service knows when to expect you. So then really the next big milestone date is going to be when you can make your fast pass reservations. Now, there's been some cool developments in technology at Disney World over the past couple years. So if you haven't been within the past five to six years, um, you may not be familiar with their new Magic Band service, and it's basically kind of like a smartwatch, but the smartwatch will hold all of your reservations in your Magic Band. So this includes your dining reservations, your memory maker photos, um, and your ride reservations. So basically how this works, and in the past Disney has had like a ticket pull thing where you can just go to a kiosk and pull a ticket for a specific ride, and it will say, come back at this time, and you can bypass the line. Well, this is the same concept except for they have this really intricate online system now where you can pick certain rides uh, at certain parks um, and they do have kind of tier systems so you can't pick all the good rides unfortunately uh, but you can do three rides per park ahead of time per day uh, which is really great because some of the lines get really really long like flight of passage if when Animal Kingdom opens up, you can guarantee that it's already going to be at least a two hour wait, if not three or four hours, depending on the day. So um, the key to your Fast Pass reservations, so if you're staying on site, it is exactly 60 days before your arrival date. Now, if you're not staying on site, then it's going to be exactly 30 days before the first day that you visit the parks. So again, take out your little handy calculator that calculates the dates. And if your calculator doesn't do that, um, there are a lot of websites out there. If you just do a quick search for date calculation or subtract days from specific date calculator, uh, you'll be able to find a good tool online to use. Okay, so now you've got your fast pass reservations in place. All the big milestones are gone. You're about a month ahead of your trip. What do you do? Um, you really just need to kind of start getting packed up for your trip and think through all of the essentials that you'll be needing while you're there. So this is really just kind of a preparatory period. If you're staying on site, you want to make sure that you get your magic bands that are included with your stay selected. You can do this all through the My Disney Experience either website or app. 
So you'll want to be sure that you submit those about a month ahead of time if you'd like to have them shipped to your house. But if you don't care to have them shipped to your house and you don't really care about personalization of colors or names, uh, you can pick them up at the front desk of your Disney World hotel. This is also the point where you might want to consider um, a couple extra added features, such as if you want to do the Disney dining plan, there are three different options um, that you can do. Unfortunately, you're only eligible to add in a Disney dining plan if you have um, a package with Disney. So if you do tickets and on-site reservations, then you become eligible for a Disney dining package. You can also look at purchasing Memory Maker, which I believe I mentioned earlier, but that's another nice added feature. It is actually a lot cheaper if you book it ahead of time rather than after you see all the photos and they want you to buy them all. Unfortunately, you have to buy them in a day at a time, so you can't just pick and choose which photos you want. Um, so if you think, oh, there's a really special day coming up, like if we're on my son's birthday, like the actual day that we're celebrating his birthday, we'll definitely want the memory maker. Um, I would recommend purchasing it ahead of time so that way you save yourself a little bit of money. And other than that, um, just, you know, take yourself shopping, get yourself some fun Mickey gear ahead of time, and just try to relax and de-stress because you know that you have a fun and exciting magical vacation coming your way in just a few weeks. So that really kind of covers the basics of what the ideal Disney planning timeline should look like. Now, not to say that if you don't start planning your Disney vacation seven months ahead of time that you're going to have an awful time, but this time frame right here really hits all the marks with a comfortable uh, amount of time to make sure that you get everything in and that you don't miss out on any opportunity. Thanks again for watching another video on the Travel Buffet. I hope you learned something new that you didn't already know. I'd love to hear about the awesome experiences that you've had at Disney World, so be sure to drop me a comment below. Maybe let me know what you think the best tips are and suggestions are for planning an ideal Disney World vacation. We'll see you again next Wednesday for a new video, and until then, have a great rest of your day.